We acknowledge that we were founded on the traditional territory of many nations, including the Haudenosaunee, the Anishinaabewaki, the Attawandaronk, the Mississauga and Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, and now live on land that is home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis people. We have many representatives working across this land now known as Ontario, and we acknowledge that there are 46 treaties and other agreements that cover the territory. We are grateful to be able to work and live on this land and thankful to the First Nations, Inuit and Métis people who have cared for these territories since time immemorial and who continue to contribute to the strength of Ontario and to all communities across the province. To continue to center reconciliation, we encourage our team, partners, students and teachers to take time to learn about the lands they are currently on. Visit native-land.ca for more information. Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to our farm. Uh, this is Andrew. We are west of the city of London, um, Roy, where we are dairy farmers and grain farmers. Um, and today, I'm very excited to bring you on a tour of our dairy farm. And as you can see, we are going to start with the calves today. And we're actually going to start with this one is the most excited. This is peanut butter and peanut butter. I think it's here when a calf is um, what we do is come to the calf farm and get to the calf farm here. And the way they actually get to eat is by our, they have a robot calf feeding machine that is right there. Get my camera right. That's right there. What happens is whenever a calf wants to come and drink, they can come up and drink. So they decide, oh, I'm hungry now. They walk into the stall. All of them have an ear tag in their ear, and the robot knows, okay, this is, in the case of the little jersey here, um, peanut butter. Yes, peanut butter can drink. She hasn't drank for an hour or two, um, so we're going to give her some milk. And the milk get stored in here. So every morning we um, get milk from the main barn, which we're gonna go to in a minute. We get that milk, we bring it, we put it in here. This is this is basically a miniature bulk tank. We have a much bigger one um, back there that holds the rest of the milk, but it's basically the same thing as that in that it keeps the milk cold the whole time. This paddle here, what it does is it spins um, on and off throughout the day, and that way cream doesn't separate from the milk. And then, as I said, when they come and they want to drink, they come up, it pulls milk, that goes into the robot here, it feeds the milk up um, to be like about 40 degrees Celsius, which is, um, you know, the body temperature of a cat. And so it's nice warm milk, and then they have their drink, and um, then they kind of go about their day and keep roaming around the pen. So that is what our calf barn looks like. Um, what they'll do is they'll spend about two months in this barn here before they kind of graduate up to um, another pen. And, and what happens is over time, they just gradually kind of move up with a group. So this group of calves here, because they're all the same age, um, are, are going to stay together um you know for for as long as we have them because they'll just kind of work on work around them and grow up 
um, going throughout the barn. So that's the calf barn. I should say, if you want to ask any questions, you can absolutely. And she's going to help me um, to be able to respond to some of those questions. So please do any questions about the calf barn. You can ask them. Um, or if you have any other questions throughout as we go along. The main barn. And I'm to thank you because what we do here is basically we've got um, a, a large group of animals here of all different ages. The little calves and months old and they kind of get older and older and then this large group and so what happens is a, a cow would have a calf um and in fact carol here I'll, sh I'll introduce you to carol this is carol um she had her calf um just a couple of days ago and so what we do is we we keep them kind of over here for a little while we've got carol here We've got, if I can show you over there, there's Nell and Klein over in the far corner. They're the ones that have calved in the last week. We like to keep a closer eye on them, make sure they're, um, you know, nice and healthy. And then they get to go into the main part of the barn. I see Jillian, you have a question. How old are the calves? Those calves, peanut butter, the jersey, she's about a month old. And everybody's kind of plus or minus that. So... I think there's one in there that's about six weeks old, another one that's three weeks, another one that's two weeks, another one that's one week, um, is how old all of them are. So they are not very old, those little ones. And it really is one of those things that from that, um, from over there, where they're, you know, up to my knee to being this big, I'll show you her here, to being this big, which comes up to, you know, my chest. It only takes them two years to get from that little at my knee to up to my chest. So they grow um, and they grow very quickly. How long have you been a dairy farmer? Um, I've been a dairy farmer. So this is actually the farm that I grew up on. Um, we didn't have this barn before that. We've just kind of built this barn in the last few years. Um, but we always have had cows my whole life. And so, um, basically I grew up around cows and working with cows. Um, I went off and I wasn't a farmer for a little while after I graduated. Uh, but then probably 10 or 12 years ago, um, I came back and, and we've taken over the farm here. So it's my wife and I, and then we've got two kids, Bella and Cash, who are 11 and nine. Um, and they help on the farm a lot too. Um, in fact, they actually, after they're done school, um, they have chores they have to do every day in the barn, um, and their chores include feeding hay to some of the animals that might need it, um, maybe using a shovel or a rake to kind of keep areas clean around the barn. And then the big thing, and this is what I want to show you today, is they also have to keep our robots clean. So we've got one robot there and one robot here. And what these are is these are actually milking robots. So the way our barn works is, as I mentioned, when a cow calves and she ends up in this main part of the barn, um, then what they do is they kind of decide how they want to spend their day. So in fact, we're going to go into the barn here and we can kind of get a better look at what everybody's doing. So we've got a group of animals right here that are eating and they're eating their feed that's up here. That's their feed, so they can come up and they just eat whenever they want. Um, we've got our water troughs here. We've got a couple of water troughs throughout the barn. Um, then we've got a place for them to lie kind of whenever they want. So there's lots of room in here. If everybody wants to lay down, everybody can lay down. If everybody wants to eat, everybody can eat. Um, we want to make sure they've got lots of room to do all th those things. But as you can see, what usually happens um is is a case of some will eat some will lay down some will drink water um and some will get milk and so i'm kind of hoping while we're doing this tour um somebody else comes up to have a look this is lark 
who's in the um, robot right now. But basically what they get to do is they get to decide whenever they want. They just walk up to the robot here. This gate would be open when there's nobody in it. They can just walk in. It gives them a little snack while they're there. And then it automatically puts the milkers on and milks that cow. And then she'd walk out and she's going to decide she's going to go lay down or she's going to go get something to eat or she's going to go get scratched by the brush or she's going to do kind of whatever she wants. So, um, Laura, you asked, how many barns do you have? Um, so we actually have this one barn. So everything we have is under one roof for us. Um, it's kind of it's a mix of a few different barns, um, but they're all connected. And that way we can, the, the way we designed that and the way we built that was that basically whenever we want to move animals around, we can move them. Um, you know, they don't have to move very far. It's pretty easy to move for one or two people maybe. Um, and, and we just like kind of having everything close and um, close and under one roof. Um, Ashley, how many cows do you have and how many do you milk? So in this group here, um, there are 59 cows. So we're milking 59 cows today. Um, on the, if we include everybody else, so that would include the calves, that would include the heifers are the young ones that haven't had calves. Um, we've got some older cows that, that are what we call dry. So that is they're um, basically they're not milking anymore. They're kind of on a holiday, so to speak, where we're not milking them. They're taking kind of two or three months off before they calve um, and would milk again. So those are dry cows. So we have them as well. By the time we add all those up, um, we've got about 135 um, all kind of under one roof uh, is what we have here. So that is farmer. That's a great question, Melissa. Um, so I actually, part of the reason was um, you know, I grew up with it and I grew up comfortable with it. I grew up working with cows. So it's something that I, that I know when I like to do. Um, but the other part is that with dairy farming, um, I always get excited for a whole bunch of challenges. This is miraculous. And I knew she would come along because there is not anything you can do in this barn without her coming to find you. Um, because she generally just wants to be scratched. So meet miraculous, everybody. Um, no, so what made me be a farmer it was part of it is also very much that I, um, I like the challenge of dairy farming. So it's always one of those things that, um, you know, I, I, I'm really proud of what we do and how we look after our cows and the milk quality and all of that. But I also love the challenge of, of trying to do better and be better. And what else can we do around the farm and how else can we, um, you know, change things. And so I just like that everyday challenge that you don't exactly know, um, you know, what you're going to do in a day, but, um, you know, it, it's just exciting to be able to do. You know what we're going to do? I'm going to pause for a second because I never saw who went in. Um, this is Levi. Um, Levi is going to do a demonstration for us. I don't think she knows that she's going to do a demonstration, but she is actually getting melt right now. Um, and so she's walked in on her own. And as you can see, I'm going to try to get, we're going to move around here so that you can actually see this. Um, in that if we look, can you see those brushes spinning around? So what those brushes are doing is they are cleaning the udder off. Um, and so right now they're gone back and they're going to get rinsed off. And then those brushes are going to come back. Um, and they're going to clean off the udder again. And so we can see that way when the milker gets it back, um, then obviously it's going to be clean. And jelly. Jelly's come to say hello too. Um, as it's cleaning that udder off before it gets connected, I will tell you that we've got these brown ones are Jersey cows. Um, and the black and white ones are Holstein. They're all dairy cows. They're just different breeds of dairy cows. But I'm going to pause that thought while it attaches. You can see that red laser. So it uses a laser to figure out where it is on the cow. And then as you can see, all it does is attach. And there, 
Now she's getting milk. That basically is what our milking robots do now. Um, which up until what a year and a half ago, when we put these in, we would have to be the ones to do it. So I would go around the barn and I would put those milkers on every cow. Um, whereas this is now um, just a, a much different way in that they can decide how often, how many times they want to get milked within reason. Um, and it puts the milker on just like that. And then through the robot, it's going to collect that milk and then send it into a milk cooler. It's going to filter it. It's going to cool it. Um, it's going to keep it fresh. And then the milk truck is going to come and pick it up every other day. So a milk truck comes about every 48 hours to the farm and picks up the milk that we produce, which for us is about 5,000 liters. So every day we're producing 2,500, which means every other day when the milk truck comes, um, they're picking up 5,000 liters from us. Um, does milk from a Jersey cow different? I'm glad you asked that, Diana, because I was talking about the difference between whole seeds and jerseys. Um, it can taste a little different. And the biggest reason is that jerseys tend to have milk that has higher butter fat. Um, and the butter fat is the, you know, if you're, if you go to the store and buy skim milk, well, that milk is 0% butter fat. If you buy 2%, that's 2% butter fat. Um, homogenized is obviously 3.25%. Um, our whole herd on average, um, actually produces even more than that. So the average, um, on our farm is about 4.1% butter fat is what it does when it leaves the farm. Um, jerseys have higher butter fat. Jelly actually has the highest of anybody, um, on the farm. She has about a 7% butter fat. Um, versus a Holstein, which generally is going to be closer to that 4% fat. So that's the biggest difference. And that's why it might taste a little different is because it's just, it's basically you're drinking cream versus drinking milk when you're drinking her milk. Um, how old is your oldest cow? You want to see her? Sure. We can go see Fancy. Um, we got to go get over here. Let's go see. Fancy is our oldest cow. Fancy is. She's laying down in this pen over here. That's fancy. She's 12 years old. Um, she is our oldest cow. She's enjoying the pen. We've just moved her into this big pen. What this big pen is, is this is our calving pen. Um, and what happens is when cows are getting close to calving, I'd say three to four weeks away, we move them into... Tomorrow, actually, Saturdays are the day we kind of move animals around. So on Saturday, we'll... But generally speaking, that's what this pen is for, is um, that they just kind of hang out here. And then when they, they've got a nice, big, open, comfortable space to calve in. And that is what we're waiting on Fancy to do. Although she's not going to do it today. She's... happens is everything's kind of connected in here so let's pretend fancy calved um and what we would do is fancy would be in the pen she'd calve she might lick the calf off she might not um holsteins don't always look after their calves really really closely um but she might lick off that calf and and you know the robot um, and what happens is the robot detects right away that she just calved. It's actually going to collect that milk separately because it's colostrum. So colostrum is a very rich, very thick milk that a calf really needs to get a good start. Um, and so what's going to happen is she's going to, that robot's going to collect. And then we're going to take that milk and we're going to feed the calf. best start they can and we find that if we feed them then we know what they're getting um otherwise if a calf that maybe you know doesn't have the most vigorous start maybe only drinks half a liter or one liter that's probably not enough for her um so by us 
getting the milk and then feeding that calf ourselves, we can be sure and we know exactly how much they get. Um, and we was aiming for a calf will very easily drink four liters of milk when the they're already starting at um you know they might weigh 120 pounds start so um you know they're big calves and so that's that's why we do that um can you drink that milk that was taken straight from the cow so you could you could drink milk straight from the cow um, not the colostrum we just talked about, but certainly, um, you know, the, the, but it's a 4.1%, um, uh, butter fat milk. So it's a little thicker than what you'd get at the grocery store. Um, the, the thing about that to be that you have to be very careful about is it's not pasteurized. Um, and so when you buy it from the store, all of the milk you get from the store is pasteurized, which is an important process to be able to make sure, um, you know, there's, there's no bacteria growing in that or anything. So it's one of those things that it's important to have it pasteurized before you actually drink it. That's really the only process that, um, you know, needs to happen. Otherwise, like the milk itself is pretty tasty because it is nice and thick. Um, is every cow assigned to their own robot for cleaning and milking, or is it just the one or few robots at all? Yeah, there's only two robots. So they can kind of decide how they want to go back and forth. So they, actually, if we go back, we're going to take this period of time. If we go back, what we'll see is we watched Levi get milked um, just a minute ago. And if we check, Levi is long gone. So seven minutes to milk a cow. Um, and so because of that, then we only need, we actually could probably get away with one robot here just because, um, you know, it, it does only take that five minutes to milk a cow. And then she goes on and does her thing. And then, um, you know, the robot's kind of there and ready for anybody to come along. Here's Miraculous again. Um, my grade one wants to know, where is the cow bathroom? Oh, the cow bathroom. The cow bathroom is right there. Cows are not great at being potty trained. They just kind of poop wherever they want. Um, and so what happens is they just poop on the floor. Um, and then what we have, and if I slip over to this side, um, you can, I don't know if you can actually see, but under Klein is that big cow there under her feet is a scraper. And so what happens is every couple of hours, a big scraper comes along and just slowly sweeps down the floor and scrapes it all into a trench at the far end. Um, so they kind of do their business whenever and however they want because they're cows and you can't teach them anything. Um, it'll drop in the, it'll drop in that trench. Another scraper will take it through that trench to a pit and in the pit, then we store it and we keep it in that pit, um, for most of the year. And then what we use is we use that manure as fertilizer for our crops. So pretty soon we're going to harvest some of our crops, um, which means after we do that, we'll get manure spreaders in and we'll, uh, take that manure and we'll put it on the ground and we'll work it into the ground, and it, it's, um, it basically is going to be a fertilizer for our crops for next year. Um, so that's a bit of a tour of our barn and some of our cows and calves and some of the things that we do. Um, are there any other questions that you guys have before I let you get back to your day? How do you come up for the names for the cows? Um, so... I am not in charge. I am not on the naming department around here. Um, usually my daughter or my mother, um, those two are the two that name most of them. Um, the only rule we have for naming is that every year we have a letter that everybody born that year um, starts with that letter. So we were in the calf barn and met peanut butter. Every calf born in 2023 um, starts with the letter P. Um, and then everybody, you know, fancy, for instance, 
Um, you know, it was one year jelly for Jay was another year, and and that's how we name them. So there's not there's not too many rules. The only other thing we do is we do generally have themes. So peanut butter um, was born Nutella had peanut butter, um, and Nutella is actually Jelly's daughter. Um, so Jelly had Nutella, Nutella had peanut butter. We kind of have themes go along. Um, Lay's uh, was born from Dorito. Klein comes from Dolce. We have different lines like that. Um, so that basically is how we name animals. Um, do your cows go on pasture? Great question, Laura. Um, so this group of cows does not go on pasture. Um, what we found is we have a pasture out front. And what we found um, a few years ago was as we got things more and more comfortable in here between feed and fans and shade and sand and all of those types of things, they stopped going out. Um, and a lot of them just didn't spend any time outside. So it seemed like kind of a waste to have the pasture that nobody used. Um, so now what we do is we, we keep that pasture and some of the younger ones, the younger ones that just want an exciting night to run around because they're young and energetic. Um, they go out for a little while, but that's the group that goes out because they seem to be the ones that want to. So that's how we kind of manage how they go outside. Um, what do your cows eat? Great question. Our cows eat a mix of feed here. So this is what their feed looks like. And if we get down really close, I wonder if I can show you. This is what it kind of looks like. And so it's a, it's a mix of a bunch of things. So we've got some, if I pull this out, here's a stem of hay. So there's lots of hay in here. Um, there's what we call corn silage. And what it is, is corn silage is the entire corn plant you see in a field. We chop it all up. So we don't just take the grain, we take the cob, we take the leaves, we take the stalk, we take all of it and we chop it up um, and we store that. Then there's a little bit of, um, you know, grain in it. One of them is um, something called dried distiller's grain. And so it's something that when, when ethanol is made in here in Ontario and used to put in to fuel vehicles, the byproduct of that is called dried distillers. So it's a product that basically has no great use for us as humans. So we, um, but it, it's great feed for cows. So we kind of feed that. So it's a combination of forages that we grow with a, with a couple of other things that we buy in um, that basically are kind of waste products from the human supply chain. So um, four to five times from eight. And how many times a day do you have to clean the robots? Great question. So we... We clean the robots, I, I, we tidy the robots, let's use that word. We tidy the robots twice a day. The kids do it at night, um, Tasha and Bella, and then we do it in the morning while they're gone to school. Um, and one, and then we alternate every other day, one gets a deep clean. So we scrub it down, we scrub floors, we, we give it a really good clean every other day, and then the other one kind of gets a rinse off, and then they both get rinsed off at night. That's how we do it. So... Um, what crops do you grow? We grow corn, um, and it's not sweet corn. It's not the corn that you and I eat. It's cow corn is what I tend to call it, but it's much starchier. Um, not nearly as tasty, but works for either feeding cows or for things like, um, you know, ethanol or ingredients in food or sweeteners or a whole bunch of different things. So that's corn. We grow soybeans, um, and a lot of those soybeans get pressed. So that um, the soybean oil gets extracted out of it for, you know, again, to be an ingredient in a whole bunch of things. Um, wheat um, and wheat gets milled into products like crackers is the type of wheat we grow. Um, and then we grow hay. And the hay is basically feeds the cows or there's some horses in the neighborhood that we sell hay to. Too. So corn, soybeans, wheat, hay. Uh, which cow is your favorite? Oh, that might be the hardest question yet. Um, Jelly is a favorite of everybody. So we've got um, Carmen is a university student, and she helps us out on the farm quite a bit. Jelly is Carmen's favorite, and I kind of like her too. Um, Miraculous, you saw before, that came up for a pet. I kind of like her because she's always interested in what you're doing. Um, but then there's actually quite a few others that I like, and, and for different reasons. Just, you know, some... Look nice, some milk well, some act nice. And so I actually like quite a few of them in the barn. But those would be a couple of my favorites. So 
how many different types of animals do you have? Um, so we don't have a lot of different types of animals. We have a lot of cows. We have a couple of cats and we have a dog. Um, that's basically the only animals we have. We used to have beef cattle um, when I was younger, but we just kind of ran out of space with them and kind of had to decide whether we were going to keep beef cows or dairy cows. And we decided to keep with the dairy cows. So how many people work on your farm? Um, so on our farm, I mentioned Carmen was one of them. Um, she helps us out full time through the summer. Um, and then when she's not at university learning, then she comes and helps us for things like weekends and things like that. Um, so she's our kind of one um, employee that's here um, probably the most. Uh, then my mom and dad help quite a bit. So there's two more. So we're up to three. Um, my wife, Jess, and me get to five. Um, Bella and Cash, our kids, um, I can't exclude them because they do do quite a bit of work too. Um, so now we're to seven. And then I have a brother too or who comes and helps when, um, when I need him. So not all of us work all of the time at this. Probably, um, you know, Jess, me, mom and dad would spend the most time in Carmen. Um, and then kind of, you know, other ones are kind of coming and going helping, you know, on and off. So that's how many people work on our farm. Are you considering any other technology to help with production care? That's a great question. So this is when we talk about um, technology, these are, as I said, we installed them probably 18 months ago. And so what we've done is we've we focused a lot on trying to use them to improve that care just that and, and we really like it because they can kind of come and go and get milked when they want it also is much nicer for us i shouldn't take away from that because um a great example would be you know usually we would have to milk at five in the morning and five at night and somebody would always have to be here to milk cows at 5 a.m and 5 p.m um which is great most of the time but some nights you kind of miss out in things because it's five o'clock um, and last night's a great example that Cash had hockey at um, 5.30. We went to hockey and then we came home and did chores at 7.30. So there's just more flexibility for us. So that's the other thing we like about it. Um, when you talk about other technology, I should show you, this is the brain of the barn. Um, and so this is the other piece of technology that basically controls everything in the barn. I mentioned the scrapers that clean up the manure. It runs them. The lights are all on light sensors. So I have them turned on today just so that you could see more, but usually they would be turned off right now. And, and, it, and the barn determines when they need it based on how much light there just is in the barn. Um, that also controls the fans. So once it starts to get too warm, it'll turn the fans on and gradually speed them up. We've got these big open curtains and they're kind of on both sides. Right now, they're wide open just because of the temperature, but the barn controls itself, too, to say, okay, it's starting to get cold, or it's starting to get windy, or it's starting to get rainy, um, and it will close and adjust the curtain. So that's, a, that's some of the other technology we have now. In terms of new technology, um, you know, going forward for our farm, I think what we're, what we're looking at most is actually more on the field side. So we have tractors that can drive themselves. We sit in the seat, but we just push a button and it kind of drives so that rows are straight um, and that, um, you know, we kind of are making sure that we're not overlapping anything. We'd probably, um, you know, go for more technology to help us on the crop side would be some of the new things we'd like to look at um, even more in the future. So with that, I want to thank all of you for coming to our farm. I hope you learned something and I'm really, really appreciative to all of the great questions that you guys had for me. I hope you have an awesome rest of your day and a great Thanksgiving weekend. Bye everybody.